Welcome back to the channel. You might notice that this is a little bit different, something new to the channel. I decided to build it one day and it came out quite well. It's nothing spectacular. It's just two pieces of trellis and obviously my old bench. If you've been following me for a while, you would recognize this bench. Same old chopping board, same old kitchen as well, but I'm gonna be changing up a few little things. Just wanted to make myself be happy doing what I'm doing and I like change as well. It makes me push even harder and work even harder. And we're closing up on 500,000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane. I can't thank you all enough. With all that said and done, we're making chicken stir fry meal prep in this recipe. It is absolutely delicious, super easy to make, and it's pretty nutritious too, which I'll obviously leave all of the details about in the video and in the description. Let's get straight into it. All right, starting out, we're gonna get our rice on first. I'm adding 320 grams of washed basmati rice to a large saucepan, along with 640 grams of cold water. That's a two to one ratio. Some people do it a little bit differently. It's up to you how you like your rice. And I'm also gonna season this with a little bit of salt to taste. Let's then take this over to a stovetop, place it over a high heat, just give it a quick stir to prevent any lumps. And then we're gonna bring this to a boil. Once at a boil, place on a lid, reduce the heat to low, and allow this to cook for 14 minutes undisturbed. Now, whilst the rice is doing its thing in the background, we can prepare the other ingredients. This is one brown or yellow onion that's had its tip and root removed, obviously being peeled. We can then slice this in half and just make thin slices across into nice thin strips. Next is two medium sized carrots. These have been washed with the peel still on. We can remove the tips and then just slice in half lengthways. And then I'm gonna slice on a slight angle into nice thin strips. You can slice them straight on and you can slice them in a julienne cut, which I've done in previous videos. We're then going to need two bell peppers or capsicums for those in Australia. Obviously these are red and yellow. You can use any color of your choice. It's completely up to you. As for preparation, I'm gonna slice these in half. I know everyone does this differently. Just do whatever's easiest for you. And with them sliced in half, I'm just gonna pick out the core and the seeds and then bang it on the bench to remove any excess seeds. I have then sliced these into quarters to make them easier to work with. And all that needs to be done is slice them into strips. If you've seen the previous meal prep episodes, you'd know that we use whole heads of broccoli. This time I'm using broccolini and it's pretty much the same preparation. We're just gonna slice off the woody ends and then just slice this into bite-sized pieces, the same size as the other ingredients. Of course, there's going to be garlic and ginger in this recipe. This is five cloves of garlic and 20 grams of ginger. Both of these can be run along a microplane or a fine box grater to create pastes and then just make sure to scrape it out of there so there's no waste. For this next part, I have swapped out the chopping board because we're going to be needing chicken. This is 900 grams of boneless and skinless chicken thigh. And we're going to slice this into twos or threes, depending on size, then just slice these into bite-sized pieces. If you do have any larger ones, just make sure you trim them down just so they're the same size as the others. Last but not least, add 125 milliliters of both chicken stock and light soy sauce to a bowl. This is gonna add depth and nice umami flavors. 30 milliliters of both rice wine vinegar and Shaoxing wine for savory and acidic flavors. 35 grams of honey for a nice punch of sweetness. 12.5 milliliters of sesame oil to add a nice nutty flavor. And finally, 17 grams of corn flour, which is going to react to the heat and help thicken our sauce. Let's then get in there with a whisk. Just give it a quick break up, making sure that the corn flour is not clumpy. And then we can just pop this aside for the time being. Going back to the rice, this has now been cooking away for 14 minutes. We can then remove it from the heat, but leave the lid on for a final four minutes. Then we can remove the lid and then fluff this up with a spatula or fork, just to leave us with this beautiful, soft, fluffy rice. And like always, here is all of the macros for that, as well as the weights per portion. With that out of the way, we can then prepare our stir fry, place a large pan or wok over a high heat, add in 30 milliliters of peanut oil and allow this to get nice and hot. Then depending on the size of your pan or wok, we will need to do this in batches. Luckily I went out and bought a new pan, so this is a nice large size. And I'm gonna add in all of the chicken. And then we're gonna spread this out so it's not all sitting on top of one another. And then sear for about three minutes to get a nice golden crust. During this time, you can also season the taste with sea salt flakes. And I'm gonna use ground white pepper. But just remember we're adding soy sauce to this later on, so don't over season it. After three minutes, give this a good mix around, doing the same again, but we're going to cook this for another nine minutes or 12 minutes in total, just until it's golden brown all over and it's only just cooked through. We don't wanna overcook this right now because we will be adding it back to the pan later on. With that said and done, this can then be removed from the pan, but we're going to keep the fat in the pan because we're going to cook the next vegetables in it. Let's then add in the thinly sliced brown or yellow onion, as well as both the bell peppers or capsicums and saute this for about three minutes, mixing it regularly. During this time, the bottom of the pan might get a little bit dark. Don't worry too much, the vegetables will release moisture and bring up any of that flavor stuck at the bottom. You can also add a splash of water if that helps. It is a little trick of the trade. 
After three minutes, you'll notice a lot of that flavor has been bought up and been put into those vegetables. They have great color. Let's then add in the carrots. And we're gonna do the same thing again for two minutes, just mixing it around regularly. After two minutes, the carrots obviously won't be cooked through. They will be a little bit al dente, but that's exactly what we want. And then we're gonna follow that up with the broccolini or broccoli if you decided to use it and then continue cooking for another two minutes. We don't want these vegetables to be fully cooked through. A stir fry is perfect when the vegetables have a nice little crunch on them. Once all that's done, we can then add in the garlic and ginger pastes, which is going to add a nice infusion and follow that up with the chicken as well as any resting juices. And then just fold all of this through and cook for one minute, just so that garlic and ginger can start releasing its flavor. The garlic and ginger will clump up, so just concentrate on breaking it up just so that it cooks evenly. The last thing to go in is the sauce. Just make sure you give it a little whisk before it goes in so the corn flour doesn't sit at the bottom of the bowl. Then fold this through and cook for about one and a half to two minutes until it's nice and saucy, but everything is very well coated. Then remove it from the stovetop. And this right here is the macros for the stir fry alone, as well as the portion size weight. As for serving up, I recommend dividing everything by five. I have also left the weights per portion on those macro cards and be sure to spoon over any leftover sauce so nothing goes to waste. Garnishing is completely optional. You can do it with all sorts of stuff, chili, spring onion, or even some sesame seeds, which I'm doing here. But with all of that done, we're then left with this absolutely incredible chicken stir fry meal prep. And right here is all of the macros for everything you need. Storage is super simple on these. Just allow them to cool down for about 30 minutes before placing on the lids. They'll last four days in the fridge and up to four months in the freezer. Reheating in a microwave or in a pan, it's up to you. And the last thing that's left to do is make it all worthwhile and we can then Dig in. From something so simple, quick and easy, these are absolutely delicious. There's a little bit of prep work to do, but it's just like any other recipe. And depending on how you make it, you can have the rice going whilst you're cooking the stir fry, so it makes it even quicker. It's a little bit hard to do those two things at the same time whilst you're recording, but obviously you do what's easiest for you. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that like button. It really does help me out. And obviously we're closing up on 500,000 subscribers, so consider subscribing as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.